Hello YouTube! In this video, we have a upside down, partially disassembled iMac G3. Now, I've had this iMac G3 for quite a while now, but throughout the time that I've had it, it hasn't been working. And I initially thought that the Mac Store hard drive it came with, a 20 gigabyte model, was not working. You could probably try and install something on here to see if it actually works. But I never actually did try that out because I also don't have a Tiger disk handy to natively install it on this machine. Of course, you don't have to have a Tiger disk or any sort of disk to try and install an operating system as long as you have the file. And to do that, I have this, an external Seagate hard drive. And the reason I'm using this is because it has Firewire 400 as well as USB. Now I'll be able to use the USB on my newer Mac and use Firewire on this iMac. And the reason I'm going with Firewire is because this is 400 megabits per second compared to the USB on here, which only has a transfer speed of 12 megabits per second. So at that point, it's mainly only used for something like a keyboard or a mouse or something that doesn't really require that much data to be transferred because otherwise this would take hours to install Mac OS. We first have to actually configure this drive to be an installation drive. So that way we can actually try it with Firewire. So here we have the Mac Mini being screen recorded right now. And we also have the hard drive camera. Uh, this is already plugged in. This is the Seagate hard drive here with 300 gigabytes free. And the first thing we have to do is actually erase this. So that way we can format this as a Mac OS extended journal. And for now we can rename this Tiger Installer. And I've also got a copy of Mac OS 10.4 Tiger, the DVD ISO. This is a retail copy. And once this erases, we will then restore this image onto the Seagate disk and then we should be able to boot off it directly. So now with the Tiger installer, with our 300 gigabytes, we can simply just restore. Once we restore, we can then choose our ISO and this should effectively make this a very large USB drive. It'll also work with our Fireware iMac. It will actually show up as a installer now. And of course, this being a Mojave installation, I of course cannot install Tiger, but it is now functional and it actually should work as intended. So once we put the iMac back together, we'll be able to use this and see if it'll work. So now it's time to actually return the hard drive back into the iMac and use our fresh copy of Mac West Tiger. So that way we can see if it will actually install. The model of the iMac is M5521. Now this is actually a 500 megahertz model, which makes it a higher end version of the iMac G3. It's Indigo. It has a CD drive with 128 Pro graphics, a built-in 56K modem, as well as Firewire. And this one also has a VGA port on the back. I believe the RAM was upgraded over time. But having Firewire is a feature, so we're lucky that it does have it. Otherwise, we will be stuck with USB 1.1. And this does have VGA on the back. Once the bottom plastic piece is taken off, and once you unscrew this piece, it lifts out. So that way you can access the internals of the G3. Now, this G3, apart from it being a 500 megahertz model, also came with an airport card, which is really cool because you can make this wireless. And it just uses a normal airport card like that in a laptop. So, theoretically, you could also get an airport extreme, a later variant of this style of card, and effectively increase the performance of the wireless connectivity. And even though this also does have a Ethernet jack as well as a modem, it's still nice to see that that option is there. Now, the RAM was also upgraded. I believe an additional stick was added later on, but this is a 64 megabyte PC-133 stick, and the secondary stick is a 128 megabyte stick. So we do have a nice assortment of RAM here for this iMac, and we can always upgrade this in the future. The hard drive goes in this slot here, 
and the CD drive is right underneath it. And we also have a bunch of different things on the board. Now, you can also access the battery without having to disassemble it, but it's much easier to do so if you actually disassemble it. But I was able to remove the battery before I took it apart, so thankfully there is no damage on the board. The battery itself hasn't exploded, but it's always good to remove those, considering they are getting older. And older Macintoshes have already been damaged by old batteries. Here is a closer view of the hard drive caddy as well as the CD drive here. And of course you can upgrade these if you want to, but it is a bit cramped so you would have to find a special drive. But this is where the actual hard drive goes and if you want to you can also install a larger capacity one or even an SSD which would help with the cooling as well as the speed because it's an SSD. But here we also have some heat sinks, we have some high voltage circuitry, and we also have the speakers which are encased in these plastic spheres which help with the sound reproduction. The hard drive itself only goes in one way. It slides in and there are four screws you do have to tighten, but after that you just have to connect the IDE cable, Molex for power, and after that we can then reassemble it. So the iMac is reassembled, but unfortunately, over time, the plastics can become brittle. Now the top right part of the iMac has sustained the most amount of damage, but when I opened it initially, there were a lot of plastic pieces from this broken part. Now I have repaired it, it's not a perfect repair, and I even have many of the broken pieces that were inside the iMac. and. I tried my best to fit them all where they belonged. It's of course not going to be as good as it was brand new, but at least it still is in one whole piece. The bottom left part also does have some plastic damage to the indigo case itself, but even with these broken pieces, it doesn't mean that this iMac should be tossed into the garbage. There is a lot of potential still with this iMac, even with the cosmetic issues. The iMac is plugged in, I have this Apple keyboard plugged into it, and I also have this generic Dell mouse plugged into the keyboard, and I also have a official Apple Firewire 400 cable, which we will be using with the Seagate hard drive because we are doing everything over Firewire because USB is way too slow on this iMac. The hard drive is standing by, and now it's time to power up the iMac. Here goes nothing. So as you guys just heard, the hard drive and the speakers sound like they are cooked. Now the hard drive itself, I have low hopes of getting it to work again. However, the speakers do still make sound, but it seems to be playing the startup chime at the maximum volume. So I'm not really sure why, but it does seem to still function. However, we do still have the Seagate hard drive. 
Now this is a 300 gigabyte external drive, so we can still use that. And if we try and install Tiger onto here, we might be able to make the iMac boot off of this with FireWire. And we will be doing that with the help of the PowerBook G4. So why exactly are we going to be using the PowerBook? Well, once you plug in the actual drive into the PowerBook, it will actually pop up with the installer. And since this is already formatted to install macOS, we will be installing macOS Tiger on the dedicated partition that I made on the PowerBook. Now that will be in the next episode of the PowerBook series. But before we actually erase the drive, we will install Tiger and then we'll have a Tiger installation on here. But in the next episode of the iMac series, we will be installing Tiger onto the drive so that way we can make it a bootable copy and see if the iMac will recognize it and boot off the external drive. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to stick around for more because we definitely have a lot of projects to continue and a lot of cool stuff will definitely be happening. So be sure to stay tuned for more and as always, thanks for watching.